now this should be streaming let's double check there we go So I'm live. I don't expect anybody to see this, so so I'm not going to be too nervous about it. Somebody might pop in. Who knows? After the fact, I hope to upload this as part of what I suppose is going to be a series of me doing this regularly. Now, I've got um, four of these books back there. So I've got four of these books back there. And in fact, before I forget, I bought another copy. I bought another couple. Now the reason that I buy first, there are sketch artists and people who paint and stuff like that, that they talk about it not really mattering what kind of notebook you use what kind of sketch pad what if, if it's big if it's small if it's portable if it's you know if it's floppy if it's hardcover this kind of stuff um there are ar artists uh, one recently was talking on that issue talking about her her book um she was going through a, like it was a really significant pile of all of these older older i don't even know what to, what she called them this it's like pseudo scrapbook scratch book things and she was talking about how well looking at the pile first it's a pile and, and that's an indication of of constant effort not really practice necessarily experimentation sure it's just it's it's doing it it's being it and so she had the stack and it was um it was all different kinds of stuff and she was talking about how um it was different moves different frames of mind the stuff that was around she saw something interesting and went and, and got it and she would just work with something and with a visual artist like a somebody who paints sketches this kind of stuff um the the paper itself the paper um matters the the paper is going to be glossy it's going to be smooth it's going to be rough i mean i've got so for example i got this because i was learning to draw and you can't really tell you can't really tell here but there's first there's a different color and the color is going to matter for what I mean it's just going to matter because it's kind of like it's the default now that and that that is going to be like the background if you're doing just regular everyday sketching um, you don't necessarily put hash marks in or put colors in in the background so having having it be kind of like a little dull or really bright and there are brightness settings like settings sorry there, there are brightness uh what would be the right word for it um there's a standard um, measurement of brightness of paper and there's also why did i throw that away there's also weight and this is something you're going to see in printer printer paper it's going to talk about um does it talk directly about luminescence and so you can tell that at different different lighting it's going to be different and there's also different thicknesses that i'm i'm certain i'm not going to be able to show very well okay so so this this is fairly thin 
this is very significantly thicker. And when it's thicker, it's, um, you know, it's more rigid. It's sometimes it's necessary to make it thicker for um, if you're doing watercolors or something like that. Um, sometimes it's necessary for it to be glossy. I learned this the hard way. So that that other book that I just put down, it uh, it has very rough paper. And uh, I didn't know any better. And sometimes when you don't know any better, you're going to make some dumb mistakes. And sometimes you're not even going to figure out that you made a mistake until after the fact. And I, I got that because it, it was kind of inexpensive and it was a really nice, obviously I've got a thing for like, like nice hardcover, simple, straightforward, kind of like nice black, kind of neutral for me. And uh, so I found plain paper, not, I actually had the opportunity to get this brand, this exact size. So same company, they just make a drawing version of this. And that paper is, is smooth as opposed to rough. And I learned the hard way as I was going through like, why can't I erase my pencil like at all? <laughs> There'd always be traces of it. And I realized that I had a, uh, I had from this brand, I had, their paper was very smooth. It was very smooth. And I was actually able to erase and reuse and erase and reuse. I had like a little, like a little version of but in plain paper. And I could just reuse it for forever. I had it for actually years. And it was just like my little, um, I mean, I didn't have a smartphone at the time. So I just drew maps and stuff like that. I was wandering around and my appointment notes, my grocery lists and stuff like that. And, and I would just erase it and reuse it. And it worked. It was incredible. And I didn't quite clue in that I should have had the that version in a larger size for doing drawing so that I could erase and do it again. So I actually chose the wrong paper. And so for an artist, this woman was talking about the different kinds of paper that she was working on. And for for that kind of artist side of stuff, she it, it matters. Paper matters for, for all kinds of stuff. And so she was experimenting with different kinds and so all these different notebooks all had different shapes and sizes and paper and colors and, and she was even experimenting with like uh, black it's not like it's almost like construction paper it's this really thick stuff and she was experimenting with that as being the background color and she would be drawing with uh, gel pens um, and uh, or, or pencil crayons and, and just kind of exploring it so in terms of a, an artist in that side of things, people like that are going to, they're, they're going to care. They're going to care about um, the kind of paper and the consistency is just not going to be a thing because one single brand is never going to be consistent with one shape and style of cover and there, and with variations in the kinds of paper they're going to have. They're not going to have a product line with two dozen different things that, that a person can can, can just buy one of each and just try a little bit of each until they fall in love with something. They're going to be going for this brand who might have two kinds and then that brand. And then these guys over there are going to be on sale. And you learn that it's because they're not making that kind anymore. And, and so she ended up with this just massive pile, not just because of practice, but because she was experimenting with different mediums. Do I, do I say something like that? Materials, basically. But for a writer... For a writer, you can you can have a thing, you can fall in love with a thing, um, and you can make it consistent, and you can buy a you can buy a lot of it if it's on sale, or you can. In my case, so this this brand, maybe I should do it like so. Okay, so this brand, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Moleskine. This is a popular available i don't know it's i'm not surprised by the cost so in canada this is about 25 dollars in the united states it's probably still going to be quite pricey you're probably going to be looking at about 20 dollars and that's not insignificant and you might think 
Well, that, that's absolutely insane. Because imagine the just stack of reams of paper that I could have if I just got like uh, three ring binder paper or something like that. And, and absolutely, if you're if you're kind of like starting out and you just want to write, write. And it shouldn't matter what you get as long as you write. However, I have written before. I started with a three ring binder and paper. I thought that I would, I would pull the pages and add in new ones and add corrections and, and stuff like that. And I would explore and I would add notes and, and, and it didn't, it didn't turn out that way. Um, and again, you, you try something and you will learn the hard way because the only way to learn is learning the hard way when it comes to something that nobody really knows how to communicate properly. Now, I'm communicating. However, I don't know how to do it properly. I can explain what I experienced and how I think I felt at the time, but I can't know what's going to be good for you. And I can't, uh, I can't, I can't, it's just, it's hard to explain because I, I can't know your life. I don't ha have, um, I don't know what you've got access to or anything like that. So for me, I started off with something really simple. I migrated into something more and more fixed. There, there's a piece of me that's very satisfied by having that. I want to fill that shelf. You know, it's kind of a dream. And just slowly, slowly, little by little, little by little, I'm going to be doing that. So, I mean, part of doing that is by saying, you know, look, I'm not taking my Agatha Christie out, but uh, I'm not taking my Charles Dickens out. How about I take out this? It's like you have a shelf and you get, it's like a to-do list and you can line books up here and be like, this is pretty, but I need to read those. And this is a series. This is an incomplete series, which is really annoying. In my case, now I can think to myself, if you can hear me from there. Let us ignore the pile of stuff. See, now I can think to myself, okay, look, I've, I'm, I'm all proud that I've done four, four books that are full. Full on one side of the page, which I'll get to. But now I have four empty ones, so... I, I got to, you know, may, maybe I buy one new notebook every X amount of time. Um, and I'm challenged to make more than, than that constantly. I want to make, you know, the right, the right hand side, I want to fill with my stuff and the left hand side, I want to make nice and small and only have a couple of spares. I'm really worried that this, this company is going to vanish and they're not going to make what I love. So where an artist is going to have, an artist is going to have all kinds of different, different kinds, different varieties. I don't have that limitation. I can be consistent. I can be very consistent. Uh, so I fall, I, I fell in love with this brand and I'm still in love with it. And it works and it's great paper and it's expensive, which is a bit of a, you know, we don't always have that kind of money. All the time but I bought a bunch of spares and I'm I can I can probably fill up one of these I mean honestly that's taken like a very very long time too long so I take month long breaks so possibly doing some of this live stream will slow me right down but it'll be interesting for me maybe it'll kind of prompt me if it helps other people so I have consistency in my books I happen to have paid money into it some people, when they pay money into something, it's one of the things that helps push them. Like, it's I've already invested X amount, and it's sitting there staring at me. I'm not making use of it. I really should get around to it. And there's all kinds of tricks, and you'll learn what tricks you can play on yourself to help encourage you or, or whatnot. Because you're going to have your own unique problems that I can't necessarily... I can, I can talk about all of those things and maybe help some people muddle through some things sometimes, um, but you do you. So for one of my motivators is I've got, I've got that shelf and I can, 
I can I can point. I can point at a physical thing. And they're hard covers, they're not gonna fall over. They're kind of like books already. I mean I'm I'm making stories, so it, it, it works for me. Now I want to talk about um how things are arranged in a book. So I did all of that stuff. Um, my very first one, I, well, I wrote on one side of the, the page. And the reason I wrote on one side of the page is, is I assumed that I would put words here. I would kind of like, um, it's not stream of consciousness because that's just people vomiting words on paper. But I would write the story here. And on the, the other side, I would have like corrections and I put like a little number one and on the other side I put like a number one and I I write over here I redo things or I I make I add notes down here or, or I have this idea in mind and as it turns out um, maybe it's because I have like uh, maybe I'm arrogant and I can't tell but I don't, I don't need to make corrections. Or as it turns out, the way I work, it's kind of, it's interesting to remove the concept of needing or even being able to make corrections at all. So the three ring, three ring binder thing, I never actually opened it and, and added in new pages anywhere at all, ever. And I only, that only really clicked after the fact. And I only wrote on one side of the, those pages, and it never occurred to me until I, I picked up one of these like hardcover books. And I just did that. And the first book, I got I got into it. I got into it, and I really I, I still love it. Um, and the very last thing that I was writing got long, got really long, and got re got so long that I ran out of pages. Now, I want you to imagine falling in love with a, a piece of work you're doing, but you run out of the resources. But, so you're like, it's like the end, it's like the bottom credits of a big old movie poster where it's got like, the font is like, just we, and they're, they're trying to fit as many letters in, just kind of mashing things together because there's no space. And they have to legally or to respect the, the unions or whatnot. They, they've got to put a lot of information kind of there and small. So they're kind of cramping. I mean, at the end of lines, when, when I'm like, I'm run, kind of running out of space and I got a word and I'm kind of judging how much space I have left and be like, I can leave a big gaping space there or I can just like make the word a little bit smaller. And, and that ends up happening a lot. And if you don't think like that, occasionally kind of like, push things together a little bit more so that you fit a little bit more, you end up wasting a lot of the space out here. And I'm already wasting, I, I believe this is called the gutter. Um, if, if you end up indenting and starting to write over here, you're already wasting a little bit of space and um, there tends to be like a little bit of a margin here where you're not gonna write there either. So you end up wasting all that space on every single page. So you can imagine kind of like cramming things together, but there's no way that I can do that when I'm on the last few pages. And I don't know where the story is going to go because I haven't planned in the first place, which oh, this is ex all of this is going to be like that. Me speaking is like that. And so I ran out of pages. And when I ran out of pages, I had the decision of, okay, so I already I bought spares because I always buy spares. because so I've been burnt too many times with the company going or the product going or you know, I buy something and fall fall in love with like shopping online, and I'll buy one, and they won't have it anymore, or and it's just permanently out, temporarily out of stock permanently. So I just can't get it anymore. So I buy things in pairs now. I'll buy whenever I can, right? And so you 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 pick something up and you like it, and sometimes you don't realize until after the fact how much you like it, and you just don't have a chance to go and buy another one because. Um, of where you got it or how much it was or when you got it or it's not whatever what they have is a different style so like like that that thing this thing here i kind of like it i kind of like um, the lumberjack thing and uh i should go get a spare but you know what 
they only had that one. They only had that one in that size and color. And in fact, I wasn't going for this color. The only reason I got this color, instead of the like dim bluish one, kind of blue gray, because it's this is really bold for me. And the only reason I got this one is because it was it's the only one they have. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fall for that for for something like this that I already knew I already knew from filling up a, a binder full of full of stuff full of words that that I was I was prepared to grow into something else and get get books and so I I could get more than one and I I did my research I guess and there's the little black book concept and this is kind of a recreation I wonder if they've actually got the little story. These things ship with like a little story. So there, there's a secret little hidey hole for stuff that you like learn by accident. I wonder if the, the label has some information on it. Awesome. This is Chinese. Okay. Do I care? That is. Hey, let's let's see what my my language skills are like. Okay, so that's German. Wait, no. Oh man, I'm a bad person. What language is that? That that's got to be German, right? No. Yeah, that's totally German. Okay, okay, not bad. Okay, so I got German. I got, this is Japanese, no, this is China, this is Chinese, I was thinking it was Japanese because of that, I didn't know that Chinese did that, that can't be Chinese, that's got to be Japanese, that's, the hell, I recognize this, interesting, oh, this is simplified Chinese, oh, that was confusing, okay, so yeah, so this is Chinese. And uh, what the hell? <laughs> Pardon my language, but but look at this. I know I'm zoomed in a little bit too much. This is this is fr French. <laughs> okay, what? Guess I'm the first person to read any of this stuff. What is that? Why? I still think that's Japanese, because boy, does this look like tradition. Uh, yeah, this looks like Chinese. Absolutely, this is Chinese. Hell, I could probably translate this. And yeah, I've, I've, can I say I've learned it when I've studied the, the writing? And can I, can I get something in English now? Okay, so I do have something in English, and I do have something in, French, which I can probably kind of badly read. I want to say that's Italian. No, that's Spanish. You ever want to learn a language? Some people say translate articles, which, which I think is a bad idea, which I've already talked about earlier. Um, fall in love with the music is one way but i wonder if people would like look at the documentation for the stuff they have like the multilingual documentation that would be just hilarious to go through not not just because i mean you're comparing this description with this description and and it's supposed to map one to one because maybe it'll talk about features and you should be able to map the bulletin points bullet points um but because uh, documentation is awful, and and documentation is awful because I've been in that, I've been in that industry. So one of the reasons why I chose this particular company, this brand, this model of book, even, is the uh, is this bit of propaganda down here. Okay. The Most Kind Notebook is the heir and successor to the legendary notebook used by artists and thinkers over the past two centuries. So there is history. Okay, so there is history. And this company was 
recreating an, an idea, a trend that people with names who we would all recognize that they're reproducing a product that this sort of person had. So when I pick up this, this, this book and I'm sitting here and I'm writing, I've got company. And again, you do you, so you would have to know how, how you work to know what motivates you. And one of the things, when I discovered this kind of thing, I, this, this helped me um, almost fetishize the book. So to empower it, to give it purpose, to give it meaning, to, I mean, it's one thing to just have for me to look at a page and see it's a blank page versus look at a notebook like this and see um, something that is deserving of the kind of um, attention that I should be spending, the, the effort. Like it, it deserves my, my, a kind of respect. So it makes it a little, there's a kind of a, a kind of more of a mystical experience for, for, for writing and something like this. And so again, that, so that's one of the things that motivated me just about the, the medium I am working with. Um, so, and it's nice consistency, beautiful paper. I don't know any better because I haven't gone and tried other stuff. And one of the, I don't. Okay, maybe I'm missing out by not experimenting, but right now I'm invested in that stuff. I don't want to change. I don't want to change. Um, maybe, maybe this is a non-standard size and I'm going to regret it because I'm going to have to buy something else one day and it's going to be a different size and shape, a different number of thicknesses of pages, number of pages, and it's not going to look like those. It's not going to look like those and maybe I'm going to feel bad because I'm going to have like half the shelf filled with something that doesn't match the other half. But you know, I work with what I have and I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. Um, I can quote myself later. So the other thing to think about is, um, is what you write with. And it sounds again like something completely trivial and it doesn't it doesn't matter when you start. It doesn't matter when you start. When you start with writing, you're, you're a child, essentially. You, you write, you accept the childish lack of competence that you always begin with with all things, without exception. There are very few people with very few things who kind of start with an ascendant talent that is is that leads the rest of humanity we don't have like that's that's not you okay that's not you you're normal when it comes to sucking at things until you try it and then still sucking at it and hating it until even if you like it and like the idea and fall in love with it it's still going to be hard and it's going to remain hard until it clicks and i know people say this a lot oh you just have to try try and try different stuff and you'll fall in love with things and it just sounds you know when i was young and i was i was pre-jaded um i thought that was just nonsense i thought it was nonsense because life was hard and confusing and i was uninspired and i had to go and kind of like i had to raise myself and I, I had intellectual stimulus from all kinds of stuff. But in terms of the kind of purpose and motivation and things like that, it's not innate. It's not innate to our culture and it wasn't innate to my segment of my culture. So some people will have it in certain kinds of family or certain kinds of culture, like subculture that they're pulling from old world somewhere or other else. 
and they're, they're pulling with it so they've got it with family or they've got it with religion for example is a good one so they have like values and purpose and and all this kind of stuff exists for some people and that's one of the things that helps motivate them but a lot of people just kind of fumble around until they find the things that they love and that's kind of what i did with with writing it's like i found i found something that i love and i realized after the fact that falling in love with it it kind of snuck up on me like hey i can i don't understand because i haven't nobody taught me to do this but i like it a lot so either i'm fooling myself which is totally possible or i don't know magic i hey i like it so i'm doing it and and, and today i got time i can i can sit down and do this as a hobby if i want to and it doesn't matter i can do it because i like it and i don't need to uh, do this as a prerequisite for employment or i don't have to do this for school or anything like that oh boy would i hate that um so yeah i was i was talking about pens okay so i've got a again everything's got a story everything's got a history so i did some research and i had okay so wow no zoom okay so i've got good hands right so that they're nice big strong hands the ladies like my big strong hands and i damage them i damage them at one point it's kind of a it's kind of a scary thing to to have been writing already and to have wrecked hands I damaged them. The story goes, I had moved and I moved into a, an absolutely beautiful place. And I mean, it was gorgeous. I was happy the way, the way my area was. And they wanted to do renovations anyway. So they did renovations and I decided to help because I, I had nothing else to do. I wanted it done. I wanted it done faster. I was interested. You know, I liked the people. And so, you know, I, I let them tell me what to do, right? So there's a big problem with, with people, either the bike shed problem, they, they've got an opinion because they think it ought to be easy. You know what walls are. You've seen walls. You know how to help putting a wall up. Like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. So anyhow, I was, I was being ordered about and I was helping put up a ceiling. So one of the concerns in the audio of the area of the adjoining um, living spaces was uh, the sound penetrating through walls. So they decided to get, they decided to not actually research the problem and make the assumption that if you just get heavier material and put that up, that'll work. And uh, of course that's not the right thing to do. They were just bike shedding that problem. Hey, I, I know about how sound works and I know this and like, no, no, that's no, just no. So maybe, maybe that is the right thing to do. I, I kind of doubt it just cause. So I was putting up the ceiling and we, so we were using a material called, called concrete board, or at least that's colloquial colloquially what it's called and what it's normally reserved for places of higher humidity where it is unacceptable to have any opportunity for mold so high humidity because it's more expensive it tends to be reserved for places like bathrooms and so you'd have a bathroom where you know the even the places that have tile there will be concrete board behind it and everywhere else and and that's so that if moisture when the moisture ends up penetrating even a little bit there's mold that will grow underneath the paint. And that's why if people are ever doing renovations and there's this TV show in Toronto uh, whose name I can't remember. It was awesome. It's a really amazing show. And I actually, I think it's worth purchasing, but it, it's, it's quite old now. It's, was it late nineties is when it kind of started. I can't remember. Anyhow, a local, local guy in Toronto had a, ran a business. And his business was doing renovations. And he he is like the guy, his company is the company that gets called when there are when it's it's hard. It's hard renovations. Things go awry, things get expensive out of hand because certain things get learned. You you pull down a wall, 
this is a great example. You pull down a wall because you want to replace tiles and the old tiling is awful and cracked and, and cemented on and you end up pulling chunks of the, and you're just like, okay, I'll pull it all down and I'll put up a new, new drywall and, and I'll, I'll do it from scratch. And that's great. And they pull it down and they find problems. They find structural problems. They find rot in beams and stuff like that. It's just like, so this guy would get, get called. But there are situations, this is how I learned about the problem, how I learned about concrete board is there are situations that he'd be called in for and he, and he would be helping with that kind of stuff and they'd be doing a little bit more and they'd find mold. And mold is, mold is one of the reasons that adults get allergies after puberty or so. So normally humans are, are born with an allergy and the kind of, I'm sorry, like, we, we're born born a little bit broken in different ways. We're all specially broken, all unique. And some people get half things, and including the, the classes of allergies, and then some people develop them later in life. And mold is one of the things which, exposure to mold is one of the things that will give people health problems. Sometimes, if they're lucky, it's just health problems while they're living in that house. So some people, they'll live in their their family house and they'll move out at a certain point and problems will go away but sometimes they'll move into a house and problems will appear sometimes that's directly related to things like mold sometimes there, there have been well i mean the classic example is lead paint but there was also things like lead in the finish of of like the vertical so you've got the many many slats of blind where you, you tug on the little thing and it, it opens all the slats up. I can't remember what the term is. I want to say Venetian, but I'm just making that up. But it's the it's the cheap like metal bendy ones. The, there was a, a thing where there was lead in the finish of those. And it's stuff like that. And you wouldn't think it, but stuff like, like lead paint would actually very gently leak into the air. And it would actually poison people, essentially, giving them health problems. And mold is one of the things that gives health problems. And the glue used for carpeting is one of the things that gives people health problems. And um, so I learned about concrete board uh, from this home improvement television show because of mold. I know I, I saw them be like, they find mold, they leave. They get like the equivalent of a hazmat crew specialty com specialty company that comes in that takes all that and all that material and pulls it out and they've got respirators and they've got suits on and stuff like that and they actually take it take it really seriously because when you're actually doing proper renovations there are laws imagine you move into a house that's been renovated and you you or the company that you hire to judge the place to help there's a little bit of of negotiation when you, you go into a house and it's a wreck and you're like well i'm not paying your asking price what's lower because i'm gonna have to renovate and there are some places you go into and they the place has been renovated and they it's been renovated enough that they can raise they can raise the price up to the perception of their renovation fee and maybe convince people to pay a little bit more because it's already renovated hey we've saved you all the trouble but they do this crappy job of renovating, they end up hide, uh, hiding some of the problems, like like mold. So I learned about concrete board, and, and we're putting it up on the steel line to prevent noise, which I, I wish it worked, but it turned out it didn't work. Because um, I would I would talk at night, and not I wasn't doing this, I wasn't actually narrating or anything like that, but I was talking with friends, and it, the upstairs people had um, early mornings and stuff like that. So they were turning it at 9 and 10 o'clock. And I was still talking at 9.30 and that was too loud for them. Anyway, we were putting up concrete board and I damaged my, my specifically the, I don't even know what's in there, but specifically that, but really everything. I had problems um, typing and holding a pen. And again, because I'm talking about pens. And... I damaged it because I was holding, because I'm tall, and I was holding for a ceiling. I was holding the concrete board like so up, 
and it was really heavy stuff and it took too long to to screw gun in enough so that the weight would be off of my fingers and it was heavy heavy and i was standing on kind of like tippy toes and i just needed like like a little extra height to stand on and then it would have been flat on my hands and i would have been fine but no i was tough you know carrying all the groceries in one hand and one hand in one trip kind of thing so i damaged myself i don't blame them or anything like that i'm, I'm not i'm not like that and so i so I ended up having wrecked hands. And the reason that comes back to, to a pen is I wasn't healing and I had it in my head that I was never gonna heal. So traditional ballpoint pens are just like scratchy, inky balls that you're dragging across. And I learned about something called a, a ceramic tipped pen. And it's, it's the exact same thing as this, the same writing experience but it was said to be smoother. Now I have since learned things like gel pens, which are even smoother writing, but they're, they, they're kind of leaky, which I'll talk about. And, um, but they're wonderful. That's my, my standard thing to do, but uh, it's hard to write on a bus, which is something that I have actually done, which I guess intrigues people. But I mean, there's no difference between somebody reading or writing or drawing or whatever. It's, should be cool so that's how i ended up finding pens and falling in love again with the brand concerning wanting consistency and wanting variety and i've got one that's in silver all right again lighting wow i wonder if i can no that doesn't help at all Right. So, I mean, it's pretty and all that, and that really helps. And again, with the kind of ritualizing and adding a little mysticism in it, I really love these pens and I fell in love with it. And I had to have these imported from Japan to the United States into Canada. So it was kind of a cool experience. And this is nice metal, so it's not like it's going to wear out. And I, in fact, have three of these. Um, so if I lose one, that's okay. And I'm, I'm certainly not going to damage them. Um, they're not going to not work as pens anymore. And they're, if I can actually, again, damaged hands. So, okay. So it's, it's a pretty standard refill. I can get this from elsewhere. So if I wanted to, I can replace this, but this is a, this is a ceramic ball in there. So it's pretty smooth writing. So this is kind of why um it i it was okay for me to start using a pen i actually own a couple of typewriters um i don't have ink for them so i use them for a little while what a weird experience because they don't have all the keys so they're missing like one of them doesn't have an exclamation point <laughs> you're supposed to use um, um like a period and then you backspace and then you use like a single quote mark because a single quote mark is up and down directly as a single quote mark should be I'm, I'm of that opinion and that's how you make the bang character an exclamation point just the weirdest thing and and i i, I actually and so I, again typing interesting experience with that but i i ended up healing so i can use like other kinds of pens so the book is a, a thing thinking about the book is a thing doesn't matter to begin with unless you like it as a motivator the pen is a thing if you make it a thing it doesn't necessarily matter one of the things that was interesting about pens when i'm thinking about pens is one person was saying that there was a difference in experience i can't can't remember who it was or i, I read it somewhere this is one of these comments on the internet right and sometimes it's really valuable to pay attention to comments especially if it's on like some source you don't. So the original post is something that you kind of, you know is wrong. It's, there's a difference between knowing something is factually incorrect and uh, having kind of the flinch reaction or having a, 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 a significant ideological or other disagreement with. And it's very valuable to look into the comments to either 
understand more about why your intuition says something is right or wrong or whatnot, but I can't remember what the original post was, but this comment on the internet um, talked about one person's experience with pens. And this person said that the clicky pen, which the clicky pen, ready to go right away, okay? And there's the argument that it's more convenient. Totally, it's more convenient. You know, it's disposable. You think it was cheaper, but it's actually not. Um, this is a wonderful pen. If you're spending a couple of bucks on a disposable pen, some people have the means to do that. Some people don't. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily matter, right? I made it matter. It had to matter. So this person was talking about there being a different experience between I've got my pen, I've got my paper, ready to go, okay? But there's a different experience between that and that there was a moment of commitment in deciding by pulling a cap off, by putting it on, that, that this is now a brush, that I am I'm preparing, I'm in the moment, I'm choosing to do that. And now maybe it's because it takes time for me to, to turn it off, that it's inconvenient to do that. And maybe some of that kind of sticks in my brain as, as, as it's just like this. It's like, it, take, it takes a little bit more to, to turn it off. Or maybe it's a preparation of actually kind of the ritual of preparing the moment. And th that's the argument this person had is, that there was a kind of from nothing to actually writing of, of, of preparation. And there's more than just that. That was just the pen. And I've thought about that. There's a concept called the beautiful room. I use a concept called, um, I call a context, where if you, if you live in a bedroom, for example, a lot of people live in a bedroom. And you don't have like a second, you don't have like a second room that's a library or study or, or that's all you've got is a room, like your student or something like that. And, or you're, or you're young, you're living with your family, right? And you, you might think that you're kind of stuck in your room and that's where you live and that's where you play and that's where your spare time is and, you know. It used, there used to be this place called outside where people would go and do things, but, but more and more it's, it's inside, where it's places with ceilings and walls. And people box themselves not just in a house, but in their room. And if you're thinking about writing, you're thinking about your tools, your, the ritual and the mood, the motivation of the actual paper or book or pen, I've worked with pencil, that's another thing to talk about. And taking, you, you don't have to be trapped in a bedroom, sitting down at the same desk that has your keyboard on it. You can, you can leave everything non-essential behind, including your phone, and go in your kitchen and sit down with the only two things that you need to have, paper and pen, and right there. And there's something about the ritual of choosing to do that by moving it to another location that is for that and leaving everything behind that is not for that and making the choice to set time aside and have like a minimum 20 minutes of sitting down there. And usually if, if you're one of these fuzzy minded people that gets lost and distracted like I often am, then what you want to do is you want to encourage a, a way of making it appropriate, Don't, not forcing, although sometimes you have to do that, of making it appropriate for there to be only that thing to work on. And there's a hummingbird concept that I'm going to make a video separately on that, that has to deal with hopping between different contexts in order to keep active in general and doing accomplishing a little bit of a lot of things at the very least because some some people like myself have a hard time sitting down and doing one thing for a very long time that that doesn't 
work unless it's employment. I love that for employment. I don't understand how I work. So I'm, pencils, I may as well bring that up and, and a typewriter. So there's a, I have learned, although uh, after I had been learning this, um, I've heard what other people think on it. There's a notion, maybe I should bring my mic a little bit closer to my face. Oh God. Okay, hopefully, hopefully it wasn't so quiet. So there's a notion that people have where um, when you're writing, okay, as you're writing word after word, there's a difference between you using a computer and you using a paper. Using a paper to actually add your words the reason there's the biggest difference is there's a kind of a distraction of writing using a computer because you can go back and you can make changes. You can't just go back and make changes to the last word you type. You can go back to the sentence. You can move things around. You can fiddle with grammar. You can go way back to the beginning, to the previous chapter. To, you can go back and you can... And if you're the kind of person who... When that is a thing that is a massive distraction that that the moment gets fuzzed into all of the previous moments because you can go back and change all of those previous moments but with something that you can't do that with like a typewriter um like a typewriter or pen and paper the things change things change and i can say just go try it and you'll understand and it's going to be hard and you're going to make a lot of mistakes and it's okay to cross out sentences and do the last sentence over again that that has to be acceptable because sometimes while you're exploring even in a in a single sentence you'll you'll screw up word order or you'll you'll reuse a word you used earlier just to get an idea down and then you'll go back and be like oh i don't like saying that i don't like using certain words again and again and again you should not have the same word twice in a paragraph i make really short paragraphs too so maybe i'm just i'm sensitive to that and again you do you and there's a big difference between using a computer or a pencil and using a typewriter or pens now okay you can say typewriters aren't a thing they are actually thing. There is one company that I know about that still makes typewriters new today, and they make typewriters that are enclosed and are clear plastic and meant for prisons, for people to type. Which I approve. I actually think every well, where appropriate, typewriters should be available to to all of them because oh my god, like writing pe people should be right. That's one of the the most wonderful tools for thinking and it's kind of there's a kind of meditation that exists there and they're producing something it, it's art it, it, and it's it's quite a bit safer or maybe a little bit more private and comfortable for a person to sit down in front of a typewriter and use that than you know, like going and paint but now you've got paint brushes so what are you using your fingers and you, you have to like clock in all the different brushes and stuff like so nobody's going and making shanks out of their out of their paintbrushes with a typewriter it's not so much of a problem maybe you've got to keep track of every piece of paper but however it works typewriters are actually still kind of a thing kind of so it is possible to get them and it's possible to repair them and re-ink them and buy used and all this kind of stuff it's doable but you might think just go with pencil because with a pencil you can erase it you can do it again but the fact that you can erase it and do it again is something that is almost burdensome. The possibility of doing that is burdensome on the process of writing because that, the, the, a, a clouded, open, confused mind that's already reaching out with tendrils, exploring different things, already has issues with concentration. And that, the, the, the fact that the entirety of the history of everything that's been written could be changed makes all of that puts all of that on the table like right now and it's kind of a problem and i just thought to maybe check to see if there's anybody chatting in here i hope not 
Oh man, I hope not. I can't even see my chat. So it's okay. There's only one person here. That should be me. I hope that's me. Good. Okay. Now I don't even know what I'm doing. This is my second stream. My first stream was absolutely awful. That did I put it up anywhere? It was muted. So, you know, kind of doesn't count. It was great, but it was muted. And I actually wrote for that one, and I'm not actually writing for this one, so yeah. let me maybe think about this. Okay, good. So if somebody does happen to chat, do I need like a like another monitor? I can't. I don't know if I can actually use another monitor because it would have to be like a cool monitor that actually gets is like supported by this video card and. Yeah, I, uh, maybe what I'll do, uh, whatever, I'll think about that later. I actually kind of want to have uh, like a series of me exploring that kind of stuff. I'm getting better with the YouTube thing. Okay, so I was talking about pencils. Uh, pencils are kind of a problem. So I use pen. I use pen and I love pen. Pen is good. The pen is good. Use the pen. Pens are pretty common. Pens are pretty inexpensive. If you want to actually invest in pens, then you can you can make a ritual of, out of getting something really nice and falling in love with something nice and getting something that can be refilled. And sometimes these the inner ink cartridge can be replaced and uh, with a generic one. And there are standard sizes that you can think about. And there's kind of like a culture around pens. And if you can be fancy and have like um, a calligraphy pen or something like that, but if that's something that that draws you in to to a kind of beauty of writing, then then pursue it. That's the kind of stuff that you don't necessarily want to keep in mind, but it's going to just happen as it happens. Um, and yeah, as it's been an hour and I haven't actually written anything, maybe I should just end it here because it was actually fairly productive in terms of you know conveying some of the things that i think about or that i have thought about um yeah that's let's let's end it here this is ended while you're ahead